Uh, kia ora, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, come here today and talk. So this is uh, our experience uh, with whole genome sequencing. But first, I, I need to sort of take you back in time to set the scene. Uh, this was us in 2017. We had many years we didn't, where we didn't have any listeria, and all of a sudden we had a problem. We decided, uh, with the best of our knowledge we had at the time, we closed our plant for five weeks. Uh, we'd done extensive work on the floors, um, and we'd done a lot of work on our walls. Uh, these were the sandwich panelling walls. Um, yeah, the five weeks was a long time. Uh, you, usually, you know, staff only have about three or four weeks. Uh, so try to place staff in other areas was quite significant for us. At the end of that, we, we had this um, sort of beautiful looking factory. Um, you know, it was about 25 years old, so it, it got a really good facelift. Um, and, and that went really well for a while, and then a year later, we got a new floor uh, put on again. So um, we weren't getting there. And um, 2019, we put another surface on. So really, things had to change. Um, you know, we'd, we'd done everything we sort of could. Uh, all the good work we'd been doing sort of 15 years prior. Um, yeah, we, we were sort of wee bit lost. And this is where whole genome sequencing come in for us. So yeah, our journey started um, sort of late um, 2019. Uh, we had held some, um, some uh, isolates and we'd got them sent down to ESR uh, from the work that we had done. And um, I was hoping all these were going to be the same, but these ended up being three different families. So uh, what that told me is, you know, in the past we'd find listeria in one spot, and then we'd find it in another, and we'd go, well, yeah, it's come from there. So we'd put all the energy into that and sort it, and, you know, yeah, and all of a sudden, you know, it might have went away, and that could have been for other reasons as we're now learning. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, that's where we sort of were, and we were going, all right, well, I need to try to work out what's going on next, you know? How am I going to get the rest of this? So I think we, you know, we're about 80% there, uh, but, you know, 20% more, that's where we needed help. And this is really where the whole genome sequencing really um, hit home for us. Uh, this is uh, up, sort of up to date to the end of January. Um, this is all our families. Our family tree, uh, we've spent uh, a few years now looking. I've been in drains, I've been out to farms, I've been in hatcheries, I've been in waterways. I went looking everywhere and everything that had some connection to us. It may not have been important today, but it might be important tomorrow if I have an issue. So I think we've got about uh, 18 families there. Then strain relationships, we, we found some that were really close, which was really good. So when we started doing some work um, on this and trying to loot, link back to root cause, you know, we, we found, um, and I think uh, someone mentioned before, less than four. In between there, you know, they're practically the same. So this really helped us um, work our way through this. Along the journey, um, we found some incoming strains, what I would call incoming strains. We would sort of found in other plants or parts of our operation, whether that be out at sea. And I'm not going to focus too much on that today. I'm going to focus more on resident strains. So on our journey, we found some resident strains. So these are the strains that were probably causing us this, you know, uh, once a year shutdown, uh, resurfacing floor, and what have you. So we were able to identify some strains, and then, you know, we wanted to start eliminating those, because they were things that we could control. They were in our plant, in our operation. 
we should be able to remove them. So this led us to doing a bit of thermal imaging. Uh, so we'd done that of all our plants. As I mentioned, we had a fairly old plant. It was 25 to 30 years old. So we started using that to help us. This is an example um, on inside a, um, a chiller. Uh, you can see the blue there where the moisture is on the left-hand side. Um, and then on the, the right there, we've, um, there's a bit of image panelling that's been cut out in the middle photo uh, where that water was, um, and that's a hand pressing against the sandwich panelling and moisture coming out of it. We don't, drilled holes in those to start with, uh, tested, and we found listeria. So over the years, as things give away, in plants, sealants, and what have you, you know, water and stuff gets in there. Uh, flooring, um, yeah, we, we found with that uh, thermal Im imaging, uh, we found some trapped water in the flooring. So um, also found um, in the right there, we actually found listeria still living in the flooring. So I've got a piece of this flooring here. It has been nuked, uh, but you know, this is 20 years of flooring, so about an inch thick, and you know, we were probably just putting a sticking plaster over, over it and over and over it. So we ripped out all that flooring, um, and um, yeah, since 2020, uh, we haven't had to do anything more on our flooring, so, so that's been great. Wheels, um, sorry, these are some older photos, but um, we found with some of the wheels, um, you know, we had listeria tracking in them as well, um, and we replaced those. But um, design in plastic um, is, is pretty damn important. Um, we found, we had actually replaced our wheels out with the ones on the uh, left there. And um, what we sort of found with those is um, we actually found listeria inside the wheels well beyond what we could sanitize. So I'm, I'm talking about inside the, the edge, the edge of the wheel inside here. So we ended up making these bespoke wheels, quite a nice sanitary design. Uh, the chart over the side there, you know, we were looking for stuff that, you know, because your engineers, they'll, they'll buy the wheels, right? Uh, but, you know, us as the food safety people, we need to give them the information of what we want. So, you know, we were looking for things that, you know, could stand up to going on the floors. Um, but, you know, we sort of, there was no moisture absorption, which was incredibly important. Our future work. Um, yes, yeah, so we, um, we went on, on the journey of a couple of projects through the centre. The first one was to get a better understand our strains. Um, so we were quite fortunate to do a fair bit of work with that. Uh, go out, explore a wee bit more, and learn more about the strains we had. Uh, the second piece of work we just concluded last year was strain tolerance against uh, some, w w uh, sorry, using some processing aids uh, because we'd, we'd held our strains, so we were able to start doing some work. Some future work we might look at, um, further iteration, strain survival over shelf life, and strain tolerance to cleaning chemicals. We want to understand, you know, if we've got a certain strain, what sort of chemical we should be using. So just um, advantage recap. You know, we know our families. You know, we've been on that journey for some time now. Um, we've got a really good understanding now. Well, I have a lot more confidence than I did uh, back in 2017. Yeah, so we're understanding our, um, 
our strain behaviour um, and you know our locations of interest. So again, we've just got such a better understanding than we've ever had before. It's so powerful for us. Uh, tracing back to root cause, you know, I would say I think we're only 80% there before. You know, we're up, up in the 90s now. You know, that, that's where we need to be. And, you know, there'll be future evolutions that'll get us further. Yeah, so saving money on unnecessary work. We haven't had to have those close downs. Um, you know, that affects engagement of our team members as well. Um, hell of a lot of work goes into that. We haven't needed to do that since we've been on that journey. That saved us a lot of money. So that first close down uh, was about 400,000 that cost us. I think we spent 100,000 on the next two years as well. And that's just on the, the maintenance work. That's not people's time and everything else that goes into that. Obviously, yeah, save that downtime. We've been able to freeze those strains uh, to keep for future work. And most importantly, reducing risk to our customers and stakeholders. That's why we're doing this, after all. Um, so we've taken a leap of faith. Uh, why don't you? <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Down here. Um, sorry, point of clarification, everybody else probably knows the answer to this question. Pre-2017, was Listeria found or were people getting sick and then Listeria was found? And second part of the question, do you have any listeria now? Or is it just below a certain level, it doesn't matter? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it wasn't a result of people getting sick. This was environmental uh, listeria that we were uh, trying to deal with, having to patch up the floors. So floors and stuff that was coming out of the walls. Um, you know, now we see low level, incredibly low level. Yes. That's what I'm a little bamboozled about. Yeah, for us, we needed to, um, you know, get to a root cause because we were just spending the money each year and shutting down. Yeah. So, so it led us, led us to those strains and IDing them and having that ID, you know, and finding it somewhere else. And you know, I think four or five of those strains we've never seen again um, of those resident strains we've had. So. Um, you know, that, that's gone a long way for us. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience uh, uh, in using whole genome sequencing. You also mentioned you're trying to further understand your families by looking at tolerance to chemicals and uh, technical aids. Will you combine that to understanding the genomics or the, the genetic traits of those tolerance strains in terms of antimicrobial resistance? Well, that's a good that question. A, it's starting to go over my head. <laughs> Dean, and, and Kim, perhaps I could add a little bit to your question just as a, a bit of an answer. In terms of listeria, um, the risk assessments tell us that, that any listeria can cause infection, but the lower the number, the, the, the less the probability that it'll occur. So the greater the number... Yeah. So, so in a, in a normal healthy population, uh, we look at a number around about 10,000 CFU per mil. That's, so that's quite a few. But we, if you look in a, a, a yoppy population, which is the very young, the very old, the pregnant and the immunocompromised, it could be anywhere around 100. And we tend to set, set that figure around 100. Now, so for a processor like, like um, Denver's from, in their product, if they have listeria there, it can actually grow at refrigeration temperatures, and that's, that's the difference with listeria compared to salmonella. It'll grow at refrigeration temperatures. So they 
don't want it in their product if their product will allow it to grow when it's in somebody's refrigerator within its shelf life. So that's the most important thing from them. Not that there may be illnesses associated with it, but it's to prevent the possibility of there being illnesses. And it's the same with, with um, you know, sliced ham, vacuum packaged hams and things like that and soft cheeses, where you can get growth while they're being refrigerated. It's very important to, to, to try and nip it in the bud in, in, in premises like, like Denver's. Thank you. Um, Denver, do you see any uh, advantage of being able to share your data with other people in other industries? Oh, I do, yeah. I, I think it's, yeah, we, we need to have those discussions, you know. I, I think, you know, yeah, that's my personal view. We, we do need to have those discussions. Um, you know, food safety should not be at a competitive advantage. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you so much, Denver. Thank you. You're great. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>